Hi guys! Welcome to our Logic Compass channel. We know that how important English is for you and your work. So with this series, you will have a change. Practice in English in this course. So we invited for you, Dr. Stop. So actually, we are so excited as a Logic Compass family. You know that normally uh, we do our a uh, channel as a Turkish, so I want to invite to hear Dr. Stop. Hello, Aishinur. I have a difficulty hearing you right now. I do have a difficulty hearing you. Oh. Hi again, can you hear me right now? Yes, I can. <laughs> oh, okay. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful, thank you. I'm, um, I'm very excited to be here, actually. Uh, me too. Mm. Great. Can you, can you tell me about yourself? Um, if I start telling about myself um, because of my age, I think we will end the program with my experiences. So I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you that I'm a professor or the associate professor at Bandırma Onyedi University at the International Trades and Logistics Department. And I have been here since 2016 um, when the, actually our university was established. And if anybody is interested in what my experiences are, um, they can probably ask me in person and I will tell them over a coffee. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for your introducing no yourself. No problem. No problem. Guys, you. yeah, you're welcome. Guys, we are we are here because of the uh, we will argue about logistic terms. And I want to ask my first question. What is swap body? Thank you, Aisha. Mm -hmm. Um, before I go into explaining what a SWAT body is, um, first of all, I really want to thank uh, Logi TV for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, to prepare such a program. This had been a long dream for me to do something similar to this. And this is going to be the great um, platform for all of us, I think, to practice some of our uh, terminology in English and also um, discuss it um, together. And um, with this, uh, let me tell you what is what body uh, is or is what body containers, um, in other words, are um, actually similar to shipping containers and they are typically a little smaller. They have a standardized size, uh, size and shape that makes them interchangeable across different types of vehicles. It can change the vehicle it is transported without the need for any loading and unloading system, thanks to its foldable feet at four corners, of course. They are used for transporting cargo, goods, and materials over a long distance. And they are particularly useful for companies and industries that require high flexibility in their logistics operations. Now, by the, saying this, um, the key features of snap body containers is their ability to quickly 
load and unload from various transportation modes using specialized equipment, such as cranes and forklifts. They can be transported by trucks, rails, or ships, and they are designed to be stacked on top of one another for efficiency, storage, and, of course, transportation. Um, the SWAT body containers come in various sizes and configurations, depending on the type of cargo that they are uh, intended to carry. They can be used to transport a wide range of goods, including perishable goods, bulk materials, and manufactured products. Swap bodies have several advantages over any other type of containers. Uh, let me tell you what some of the main advantages of these SWAT body containers. First of all, they have lower tear weight. SWAT bodies are made of lightweight material, which means they have a lower tear weight compared to other types of containers. This allows uh, for more cargo to be up. Uh, loaded, sorry, while still uh, staying within the weight restrictions, which is the good thing. And that means that it leads to cost savings. Um, the other advantage is it has lower cost due to their lightweight construction. Uh, SWAT bodies are more economical to produce, transport, and of course, handle. Uh, they also require um, few uh, handling and loading, uploading equipment compared to other types of containers, which can help to lower overall transportation cost. What are the other advantages? They have increased cargo capacity. Um, SWAT bodies have more cargo capacity than traditional maritime containers of the same size. This is due to their design, which allows um, more cargo to be loaded and stacked inside the container. Hmm. So we got other advantages. It has easy handling. So what bodies are designed to be easily handled by trucks and trailers. They can be easily loaded onto a trailer by using their legs which eliminates the needs for additional equipment and reduce, to, reduces loading and uploading times. Is that it? No. They have intermodal flexibility. So that's another advantage. Swap bodies can be used in intermodal transportation, which means they can be transported by different modes of transportation, transportation such as um, trucks, trains and ships this makes them a versatile option for businesses that need to move goods across different regions although swap body containers have several advantages there are also some disadvantages to the contain to be considered and um what are those they are also um main disadvantages, we should say, that's, that's the main disadvantages, they have limited stacking abilities. Now, swap bodies are designed with legs to make them easier to load and upload. But this also means they can be stacked on top of each other like traditional maritime containers. This can be a disadvantage when it comes to storage and transportation efficiency. They have restricted use. Some bodies uh, or swap bodies are primarily used for road transport and are not typically used for maritime transport. This limits their useful uh, usefulness in certain situations, such as when goods needs to be transported across ocean. Um, what are other disadvantages? They have size limitations. Swap bodies come in, uh, in a limited range of sizes, which may not always meet the specific needs of certain types of cargo. This can result in need for multiple containers and alternative transportation solutions or transport solutions. 
Um, what else? They also can have a regulatory issues. Uh, swap bodies are subject to different regulations than traditional maritime containers, which can cause issues with international transportation. Um, regulations regarding size, weight, um, and handling can vary by country or and or region, which can create logistical challenges. They have higher maintenance costs. Due to their design, swap bodies may require more maintenance than traditional maritime containers. The legs and other components may need to be inspected and maintained regularly, which can increase maintenance cost. So overall, swap body containers play an important role in facilitating the smooth flow of goods uh, through the logistic network. So um, after discussion um, or let's um, after all this, can you do me a favor and use swap body or swap body containers in a sentence? Yeah, I can. Okay. Thank you for also explaining us. And my example is um, we decided to use swap body container to transport our goods across different modes of transportation because they are more flexible and adaptable than standard shipping containers. That's perfect example. Um, let me give you one. The logistic company utilizes swap body containers to streamly transfer cargo between trucks and trains for efficient intermodal transport. <laughs> okay. <laughs> these are like some examples that we can make sentences and use these little words within. Do you want to do a dialogue with me? Let's yeah, discuss this. Maybe we can go to a cafe together, pretend like we are in a cafe as a two friend and exchanging some ideas on a better way to load our um, car. Okay. Let's do you want to do that? Yeah, okay. I can. All right. Hey, have you heard about using swap body container in your logistic operations? No, I haven't. What are swap body containers? Ah, let me tell you. They are a type of freight container that's designed to be easily transferred between different modes of transportation, like trucks, trains, and ships. They are similar to ships shipping containers but they are smaller and more versatile mm, interesting mm -hmm. what are the benefits of using them uh, well one big advantage is that they can be quickly loaded and uploaded from different types of vehicles which makes them ideal for companies that need to move goods quickly and efficiently across different regions and modes of transportation. They also come in various sizes and configurations, so they can be used to transport a wide range of goods. Mm, that sounds useful. Mm -hmm. How do they compare to other type of containers? Ah, well, <laughs> compared to standard shipping containers, swap body containers are more flexible and adaptable which makes them better suited for intermodal transportation. They're also designed to be stacked on top of each other, which makes them easier to store and transport in large quantities. Mm, got it. Mm -hmm. it, sounds, <laughs> it sounds like a swap body containers could be a good option for us. And do you have any recommendation on where to source them? Uh, well, there are many manufacturers and suppliers of swap body containers out there. I can look some if you want in the future and uh, get back to you with recommendations if you like, because I need to do a little research on that one. Mm, that would be great. Thanks for the information. Of course, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so, um, 
This is Thank how we can um, we can use swap body, and we can also with this dialogue we are um, you know we give a little bit of discussion and also some information. And this this is like a summary of the information I have given. So I think this would be a great one um, for I, anyone I, to practice. I think so. Thank thank you very much. You told us swap body. Uh, mm -hmm. Now let's continue. What's trailer? Ah, uh, <laughs> trailers. In logistics, a trailer is a large vehicle that is designed to transport goods over long distances. Um, it's typically pulled by a tractor truck and is commonly used for shipping large volumes of cargo, including raw materials, finished products, and customer pro goods. Um, trailers come in various sizes and configurations. Um, they are designed to accommodate different types of cargo. Some trailers are open, while others enclosed to protect the cargo from the elements or the weather. They may also have different loading and uploading features, um, such as side doors, rear doors, ramps, depending on the specific needs of the cargo. And the type of loading and um, unloading equipment available. Um, what else? Trailer is an important component of the logistic network as they are enable the efficiency and timely movements of the goods across long distances. They are used in conjunction with other modes of transportation, such as trains, ships, planes, to move goods from one location to another. The use of trailers allow more flexible and cost-effective transportation solutions as they can be loaded and unloaded at different locations and can be used to transport a wide variety of goods. In land transportation, a trailer is a type of vehicle that is designed to be towed behind a tractor or a truck. Um, I have an American English, so I say truck. Um, trailers are commonly used to transport cargo, goods, and materials over long distances on roads and highways. In the context of land transportation, trailers come in various types and configurations, such as flatbed trailers, dry van trailers, refrigerated trailers, tanker trailers, and so on. The choice of um, trailer type depends on the nature of the cargo being transported, as you can imagine, as well as the specific requirements of the transportation job. Um, flatbed trailers are typically used to transport large and bulk items that can be accommodated in large sized cargo containers. On the other hand, dry uh, van trailers are fully enclosed and are used to transport the general cargo that does not require special handling or temperature control. Speaking of temperature control, for that, we have refrigerated trailers, also known as reefers. Um, reefers are used to transport perishable goods that require temperature control, such as fresh produce or frozen goods. Um, the other one is tanker trailers. Um, these are designed to transport liquids or gas cargo, such as petroleum products or chemicals. The cost of trailer can vary depending on several factors, such as its type, size, material, and its futures. Now, how and what steps do we need to take to calculate the cost of the trailer, right? So, first of all, we need to determine the type of trailer we need. There are several types of trailers available, such as utility trailers, flatbed trailers, enclosed trailers, dump trailers, and so forth. 
the, the type of trailer that you will choose will impact the cost of the trailer. Um, determine the size of the trailer also is a factor way, and that's the second step that we need to do. Trailers come in different sizes, so you need to determine the size that will see, suit your need. And the larger the trailer, you can imagine, the more it will cost. Um, third step that we need to do is to determine the materials of the trailer. Trailers can be made from different materials such as steel, aluminium, uh, or composite materials. Steel is usually the most affordable option. Um, aluminium is lighter and more durable, but also more expensive. So the other step that um, we need to, to, to consider is additional features. What do we need? Traders can come with several additional features such as brakes, ramps, toolboxes. Um, these pictures, um, features can increase the cost of the, the trailer. The more features you put, the costly it will be, of course. Um, so you need to research the prices. Once you have determined the type, size, materials, features you need, of course, you need to research the price from different manufacturers or dealers. You can also look for used um, trailers to save money. It's always a better option, tell you the truth. <laughs> so to calculate the cost, add up the cost of the trailer and any additional features, and of course, taxes and fees, so you will get to the total cost. So keep in mind that the cost of the trailer can vary greatly depending on the factors mentioned just now. So it is important to do your research and shop around to find the best deals. So overall, it's not an easy way to choose, but a research is the better, better method. And of course, when you are doing your research, you need to um, up, up hand, you need to know exactly what you need. And then you will find the best traders that will suit your company. Mm. Firstly, <laughs> I you. wanna firstly I wanna say you uh you are telling so clearly. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you. Um I am very excited to be on um on this program with you. So I feel my excitement and um Sometimes when I'm excited, I can talk too fast. So I'm trying to <laughs> hold myself back. <laughs> mm. So um, can you give me an example of a sentence yeah. uh, using trailer? Mm -hmm. I can give, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. My, my example is, I need to rent a trailer to transport my furniture to the, to the new house. Uh, I hope you will be able to find the best trailer. <laughs> <laughs> <I hope. laughs> Let me give you one too, if that's the case. The company dispatched a trailer to the loading dock to transport the heavy machinery to the construction site. <laughs> Thank you for your example. Yeah, great, great. Would you like to do another dialogue with me? Yes, of course. Okay. I so, want to love you. <laughs> <laughs> in this scenario, a logistician is uh, marketing their new trailer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So okay. I am the logistician and I'm marketing my trailer to you. <laughs> hey, have you heard about the new trailer we got for our logistic fleet? No, I haven't. What's special about it? Oh, it is a refrigerated trailer, which means we can now transport perishable goods like fresh produce and frozen food. It's going to help us expand our offerings and better serve our customers such as you. Mm. That sounds like a pretty advanced piece of equipment. How does it compare to our other trailers? It's a standard size trailer, about 40, 48 feet long. It also has a loading capacity of 25,000 pounds. So you can transport a good amount of cargo at once. Mm. 
I see. It sounds like a valuable addition to our logistic capabilities. When can we start using it? Um, actually, you can use it anytime you wish because we have plenty of them in our um, in our hand. Mm, that's perfect. <laughs> Great. I can't wait to hear from you in the near future. Thank you again for your explaining. Guys, we have learned also with trailers. So let's continue uh, to learn agency. Great, great. So agency. So which agency? Okay. Agency is commonly used terms. Um, there you can also hear sometimes agent, okay? Agent. But commonly we use agency. So in logistics, an agency typically refers to a third party service provider that is contracted by a company to handle specific aspects of their logistics operations. These agencies can provide a wide range of services such as transportation and warehousing, freight forwarding, custom clearance, and so forth. Mm, essentially, they act as an intermediary between the company and the various logistic providers. They are involved in moving their goods from one place to the other. Using an agency can be beneficial for companies as it can help them uh, to streamline their logistic operations and reduce costs and they don't need to have dedicated in-house teams which is good for every aspect of their logistics so indeed they can rely on the expertise and resources of the agency to handle specific functions however it is important to choose the right agency that meets the company's needs and can deliver the desired results. There are several different types of um, agencies and logistics, each with their own specific functions and areas of expertise. Um, let me give you some common classifications so that will help us understand what they are. Um, freight forwarding agencies, we hear them quite a bit. These agencies specialize in organizing and uh, coordinating the transportation of goods between different countries, modes of transports, and carriers. Another agency is Custom Clearance Agency. These agencies help companies navigate the complex regulations and paperwork involved in custom clearance ensuring that goods are properly um, declared and um, comply with local laws and regulations. And uh, what else we have? We have uh, transportation agencies. These agencies provide various transportation um, services such as trucking, shipping, air freight or rail freight. Um, they may also offer additional services like loading, uploading, warehousing, or distribution. Speaking of warehousing, we have warehousing agencies. These agencies specialize in providing storage and distribution of facilities uh, for goods. They can offer a range of services such as inventory management, for, um, order fulfillment, and value added uh, services like labeling or repackaging. Mm, what else we have? We have uh, brokerage agencies. These agencies act as an intermediaries med med uh, between companies and carriers or other logistic service providers helping to negotiate rates, arrange um, transportation and coordinate logistics activities. What else? Um, third party uh, providers, third party logistic providers. 
these agencies provide a comprehensive range of logistic services, including transportation, warehousing, custom clearance, and, uh, and more. They can offer customized logistic solutions tailored to the specific needs of their clients. Mm, Non-vessel operating common carrier agencies. These agencies specialize in ocean freight uh, transportation and act as intermediate <laughs> intermediaries between shippers and ocean carriers. They typically provide a range of services, such as booking cargo space, um, issues, uh, issuing bills of land, land landing, uh, and handling documentation. These are just a few examples that I can think of right now for the different types of agencies in logistics. And um, there can be some overlaps sometimes between them. It is important to choose um, an agency that has the expertise and service that aligned with the company's needs and goals. So overall, when we look at this, um, it is uh, what I can say is that agencies, although they are cost savings and uh, they give us some advantages, um, if you don't choose the right agency, that can also cost you a lot. So um, this is what I can say about agencies right now. Do you want to help me uh, making a sentence about agencies also? I can, of course. Great. Thank you for your explanation again. You're welcome. Okay, my example is um, our company has hired a custom clearance agency to handle the documentation and compliance requirements for our international shipments. That's a great example, actually. That's a great example. We have hired a custom clearance agency to handle all the necessary paperwork and produce uh, producers for our international shipments. How is mine? Oh, that's perfect. Sarah, <laughs> you always say me less dialogue, so less dialogue with me. <laughs> All right, let's do a dialogue. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me give you a scenario. Okay. Now, okay. a logistician is obtaining some information about reliable freight forwarding agency in this case. Okay. So. Okay. Can you um, start this time? Yeah, I can start. Right. Okay. Um, I am having trouble finding a reliable freight forwarding agency for our new product line. Do you have any recommendation? Of course, yes. I have worked with few good ones before. What specific uh, or specialities, let's say, what specialities are you looking for in an agency? Hmm. We need someone who can handle both AOR and sea freight and has experience shipping to Europe and Asia. Hmm. I would recommend checking out XYZ Logistics. <laughs> they specialize in global freight forwarding and have a strong network of carriers and partners around the world. I have used them so similar shipments in the past and they have always delivered on time and within the budget. Mm, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the suggestion. I will definitely look into them. Oh, no problem. Also, have you considered using a third-party logistic provider instead? They can offer a wider range of services beyond just freight forwarding, such as warehousing, distribution, and custom clearance. Hmm. That's a good point, actually. I hadn't considered that. Do you have any three PLs in mind? Uh, you know what? Let me get back on that one because that's a tricky question. I'm going to check on it and I will get back to you. 
Okay, thank you very much. No problem. Thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you for your time too, really. No problem. Um, in this program, we do have these terminologies. And um, I think that we are talking about maybe repeating them. If our audience likes the way we are handling these terminologies, maybe in the future we can tackle another three terminology together. Yeah. And keep going. Why not? Why I'm not? so happy, not? really, <laughs> to be here with you. Thank you. And it was pleasure to, you know, do these discussions with you in dialogue. You are the best. Ah, oh, thank you. You are actually the best. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, joining our channel again, Dr. Stop. Guys, see you soon. Our next channel for education with Dr. Stop. Thank you very much for joining us. So, see you soon. See you all.